What's going on YouTube? This is Fish Week Phil. Give me an update on the Cobalt Aquatic CV40. As well as my Fluval Evo 13.5. Um, starting with the Evo 13.5, as you can see, I got my clown in here and he's pretty chill in here. He actually, every once in a while, he'll chase the crumbs around, but he's not catching that one. Uh, see, it, it's way too fast, but uh, not for the most part, he's kind of just chill. Um, brushing is down, doesn't really mess with the firefish. Um, and the tail spot blending is, well, it definitely holds its own. Um, for the most part, he's just kind of cruising right now. That they're all out because they're thinking I'm feeding him again. I just got done with the feeding. Let's see the uh, tentacles on my uh, candy cane coral there is all out. Sense the food in a tank. Um, things are looking pretty good. Even once in a while, I have some bubble algae. You know, I'm still hand picking it out. Um, nothing for me to worry about. Nothing, any huge outbreaks. Every once in a while, there's a spot here and there. This acropora in the back there, um, you can see it growing over the damaged areas, so that's great. Definitely my comeback story. Um, circle around to the side of the tank real quick. Um, Acan is still looking sorry, but it's coming back slowly but surely. How that past the dragon eyes or if it is a rock star. It's actually spread over at the bottom there. It's spread over to both rocks. It's already landed. So um, everything is looking pretty good. Ever since I started uh, making my own RODI water, um, I could definitely see the change in the tank, um, settling down in terms of algae buildup. Um, this tank was actually not as bad um, as the cobalt, but we'll get to that one in a moment. Um, still a little bit in the gravel in the bottom area, but you know I'm not too worried about it. It's not. It's not. Uh, it was. It was never as rampant as, as the other tank because this tank is a lot more mature, so it can deal with a lot more. Um, so um, it's it's been able to fight back uh, the algae outbreaks because of the water. Um, switching back, switching over to the Cobalt Aquatic CV40. Um, had some new additions, getting rid of some fish. Um, now I had a, I have a yellow candy can in here and actually it's in the back sump area. I had to catch it and put it back there. Um, I'm taking it back to the LFS tomorrow. Uh, it got super aggressive and I, you know, they, after doing some more research, I probably should have dug deeper into it. It was kind of a quick buy on that one. I saw one, never seen one before. Took a, took a quick look on Live Aquaria. Um, say quite, you know, from, from what I read, read there, I was like, okay, I can look like it'd be a nice addition to my tank. And it was for some time. Um, but after doing some more research, because as soon as I took the, um, cause I had to take the clown out, cause when I added the rusty angel, it was just, the clownfish was berserk, it was going berserk. It was chasing the, the started chasing the, the angel, the rusty, uh, the angel around. Uh, my other, my coral beauty was chasing that angel around. I just did not, it could not find a place to settle. Cause on one tank, on one side of the tank, you had the clownfish. The other side of the tank, you had the um, you had the angel, and it was just like it, it just could not get settled. Even using the mirror trick, it just was not enough. So finally, and then what made it what made things worse that the um, clown then started proceed to chase everybody around except for my um, wasn't wasn't with wasn't messing with Michael Jackson. I mean, these fish they say they're peaceful, but I've seen them kind of like with other fish. Like I seen him nip back, like he, the, the clown would not mess with that fish. So, um, excuse me, I, off the top of my head, oh, my cardinal, uh, Van Guy cardinal. Um, you know, 
actually great addition to the tank. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, would like he, Klein wouldn't mess with him, but he started chasing everybody around and got super aggressive. So I got to the point where I was like, okay, this is this is not cool. Um, so I took him out, put him in the, in the other tank, and when I did that, that changed the power structure in the tank because the clown, I think, was take, keeping my the yellow candy cane um, hogfish that I had in here. It's actually in the back, so I'll show you that. Show you uh, show you it in a moment. Um, suddenly, um, well, a couple of days ago, I had gotten a, a filamented rasp. You see up at the top corner here. A filamented flash of rasp. And a sorry blenny. See, chilling on a rock back there. Um, and it wouldn't mess with the blenny, but when I put when I came to put the tank, uh, the fish in the tank, um, my carpenter rasp, flash rasp, was gone, and I was like, "What the hell?" Like, could not find it. Searched for an hour. Could not find it. Thought it was in the back sump area. No, thought maybe jumped out of its side. I mean, somehow it got through the top or whatever. Couldn't find it. After about an hour, and I started feeding, he comes flying out from under the rocks, grabs some food, and darts back under the rock. I'm like, that's really odd because typically, adding a new fish, particularly another, another flash harass, it would have been out because he's he's super like super uh before i mean he just seemed very uh brash and and aggressive at times like not aggressive but like quick to get into any fish's face but for whatever reason he was gone and hiding and he darted out grabbed some food and darted back in i thought that was kind of odd like I, you know, it comes lo and behold he came out a couple other times and then the yellow hogfish chased him back under the rock and i was like oh boy Doing some more research, apparently um, having them in the tank with wrasses, other wrasses, is not a good idea. Um, particularly when they get more comfortable and they kind of establish themselves, they can be terror um, against any, especially with other smaller fish or, um, and even some uh, ornamental, sh uh, sh ornamental shrimp, according to what I've uh, read. Um, so, it had to go. It has to go. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, I'm not, I did not feel like having that fish in a tank wasn't part of my original, part of my original plan anyway. So, I'm not, I didn't feel any, I don't feel any real attachment to it. Um, I love flash harasses and they're taking precedence over, they definitely taking precedence over that hogfish. So, there is, it's not even, it wasn't even up for debate, so. Um, but I have two male flash harasses in the tank. Um, this one is actually, he's actually pretty large for a flash harass that I've, you know, I've seen. I've only seen uh, two other specimens in terms of flash harasses larger than this one that I've ever. Um, I saw a male uh, carpenter flash harass that was about pushing four inches actually that was pretty large it's a pretty large but I've never seen them that big um, so that was it was a pretty large fish probably at the um, later stages um, very beautiful um, but yeah they like I think with his his personality he's so aggressive that um, even at his size he doesn't really hide much ever since the, I got the hot fish out of there um, yeah. Oh, kind of circling back. When I put the bag in the tank to um, with the with the filamented flash rats, the hogfish got absolutely went absolutely berserk, absolutely berserk. Um, it actually started attacking the bag as if it was trying to get the bag to get to the to the rat to the fish. I've never seen anything like this. I thought it was it was out of its mind bonkers. Like so much so that I had the, the this top pulled back and had the, I had the bag floating here, and I was like, and he likes to kind of the hogfish likes to likes to kind of hang out in this area. This is kind of his area. So I'm like, so I pulled the bag out and put it over there, 
it swam across the tank full speed into the bag as if it, like it didn't care what it didn't matter what was in its way. It's, it, it was it was gonna let it, it was gonna let the fish have it. Bounced off the bag, was berserked. I tapped on a, I, I tapped on a glass like and startled it and it bounced off the glass, jumped on the top. It was it was it was a it was a, a crap show, guys. Like it was. He's on the top, bouncing like a jelly bean, like a jumping jelly bean. Finally, and he and he plopped into the back of the sump. And that's where he's been. And that's where he'll stay until I, until uh, he goes to the LFS tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Well, in terms of the tank, um, I. Everything is looking pretty good. Um, all the fish are doing well. Um, the new, the new, new additions are doing well. Even the um, my coral beauty is not as aggressive with the rustle as uh, with the rusty angel <laughs> as he chases the other one around. But uh, it, it's gotten better, and it, and it's it's more comfortable now where it's holding its own anyway. So. Um, Aggression is died down quite a bit. Um, right now, they just think I'm feeding them, so they're like everybody's on, like waiting for me to put stuff in the food. Even I just, I literally just fed them. I don't know why they think they're getting more, but um, in terms of algae, it's it's died down quite a bit um, since I've started making my own water. Um, there is no substitute for. For being able to do your own stuff like I don't I've definitely well worth it the time it takes me to make a thing of water it, it, it is, is for what I need is like maybe two hours turn it on walk away put a timer on I haven't I, I should I should set up a uh, float switch but um, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do that yet right now because uh, just trying to keep things a little bit simple, as uh, simple as possible for now. Who knows? Um, probably should put the flow switch just in case. But I, I've been using a timer. Um, it's been pretty, been, been very good that way. Um, so I don't wanna, don't wanna mess with things too much. Um, Corals are looking pretty go dope. Um, moved some things around, added uh, I took my um, some zoanthids from the other tank, um, put them up there. These uh, they were in the corner here. I gotta put them back because they kind of fell out. Um, kind of changed the position of this torch so it's standing more straight up. Um, this acupore that I had it was originally up here where these uh, clove polyps are. Um, not clove, yeah, not clove polyps. Uh, Got the name of them, but um, I kind of like them there. They're gonna do well. They look it's starting to do quite well and spread, so I'm gonna leave them there. Um, but that's what I, this, this was, and part of the flesh was kind of because it wasn't getting any light because it was shaded on this side. So I moved it here, started doing well, and if you can see, in the bottom right hand corner of it, there's some there's some growth on the, on the plug. That's because it was sitting here and getting light from both sides. So I decided to move it and put it here. Um, I had another aquapora die, and then I added something new up there. Um, we'll see how that those do. And everything is doing well. And this one in the middle here is doing dope. I've uh, got some hair algae on there. Um, well, hopefully, if I start Blenny, we'll find it and devour that. But uh, everything's do everything's looking dope. And hopefully, uh, things will continue. Um, I'm not. Looking to add, I'm done with adding fish to this tank. Um, at the very, if if I decide to, the only thing, I'll, and the only other thing I'll end up adding is a maca, as a macasca or flash or ass, to add a third one to the tank. That I'm not 100 percent about that. Anyway, this is Fish Week Phil giving you an update. Hope y'all having a have a great uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, do your research, try things out, and see what happens. Later, y'all.